So as most of you probably already know, Top Gun Maverick is one of the most popular movies right now. And if you haven't seen the movie, but you've seen the trailers, you'll know that there is a secret spy plane looking aircraft that they show in the movie. And if you've seen the movie, you'll know that it is in fact a hypersonic research vehicle that they call Dark Star. In this video, I'm going to be making a foam board radio controlled model of Dark Star. Without further ado, let's go build it. Maverick, the high hypersonic technology demonstrator. This was actually designed by Lockheed Martin and they actually did build a full-scale replica that Tom Cruise actually got to sit in but it didn't actually fly. So hopefully this model will fly. This is the first of its kind radio controlled model of this airplane. I hope that this works. I have designed this from scratch and the aerodynamics are well, a little bit challenging when working with hypersonic aircraft. The CG is right about here despite having wings here and actually the last homemade RC airplane that I designed had just a KFM airfoil but I actually did a flight test style airfoil on the wings here so hopefully that will give me better lifting capabilities. Also I'm wearing my Top Gun shirt, hopefully that gives me some luck on this flight. So let's go try it. Groom Lake Tower, this is Dark Star requesting permission for hypersonic takeoff. Roger, affirmative. I messed up. I deleted half the footage of the flight. So, as you can probably tell, something happened, and afterwards, I tried to trim a portion of the video but instead of saying save as new clip, I accidentally hit trim original. 
And what that did was a destructive edit on the first 20 seconds of the flight. So you miss the takeoff, you miss the flying of it, and at least, fortunately, I recovered the last half of that video, which is what I was trying to trim off. Here's the clip. So it's right in that tree there at the very top. I'm gonna turn the throttle on so you guys can hear it. All right, from this angle, viewers, you can just barely see it. It's right there. Well, folks, I'm sorry. All I had was 13 seconds from that one flight, so... Sorry about that guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. My producer has told me that there's still a few minutes left in the video. Oh wow, the YouTube status bar indicates that there is in fact some video remaining. Well, I wonder what we're gonna do. Because this is Aerospace Matt, I guess we're gonna fly something. Yep, you guessed it guys, I made another one. Why build one when you can build two for twice the price? So the updates on this one include a secondary deck on the bottom. I actually added a little wood, I guess you can call it a spar, in between the forward and rear sections to hold it together more firmly. I also put the landing gear more forward. If you noticed, in the last one, the landing gear, the forward landing gear, was about here, but now it's more forward where the actual pilot sits. And if you noticed, I made it look pretty with decals. I must admit, ladies and gentlemen, I am pretty nervous about this aircraft. I know what happened last time. I hope it flies better. I don't know if it will or not, so this may end poorly. Hopefully it works though. Let's go try it. So I forgot to mention two things on this one. A, the control surfaces were moving way too much on the last one. This is, hang on, here is full rates mid rates and low rates so hopefully this works also i have differential thrust which if you don't know what that means essentially i'm using both engines i can turn the plane so if i get into a flat spin i'll be able to yaw out of it so if i'm yawing left i can thrust right so hopefully i don't get into a flat spin though that would be bad all right, if they want Mach 10, let's give them Mach 10. Oh, the landing gear. Landing gear failure. Both of my main gear came off. I thought they were secured. I'm glued, taped. Is that part of, no, that's a feather. Yeah, my landing gear came off. All right. Round two for airplane number two. Okay, Dark Star, attempt number four. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, that's it. I'm not gonna try and fly this anymore. Obviously, it flies insanely crazy. I probably should have some sort of fly-by-wire control system in there because it needs it. It is a very unstable airframe, not CG. This is just the design of the airplane, the plan form, 
It is crazy. So I tried it, ladies and gentlemen. I flew it, as you just saw, but unfortunately, well, this bird is probably going to be for cosmetic purposes only in the near future. Okay, as I figured, it landed flat like this. Everything's still connected. So, yeah, I'm not going to try it again because this is just impossible to fly. Not CG, ladies and gentlemen. I know plenty of you are going to say this is a center of gravity issue. It is not. This is just having the lift so far back and kind of a delta wing plan form. So, I tried, but unfortunately, this one just didn't fly as well as the first one. Well, it's time to wrap this video up. For those of you who insist that it's the center of gravity being too far aft that made this aircraft fly poorly, I strongly disagree, and that's for several reasons. First and foremost, if I'd placed the battery any farther forward, this aircraft just wouldn't have been able to take off. While a more forward CG would have made the aircraft less unstable, it simply wouldn't have been feasible with this design. Second of all, I did use a center of gravity calculator and it did tell me to put it right here, and that's where I kept it, right at this mark for the entirety of my testing with this model. Also, this aircraft is just extremely unstable, and there are two reasons for that. First of all, the engines are not in line with the actual center of the aircraft, so I believe that it's pushing it up because the thrust is coming from the bottom. Secondly, this aircraft shows that it is extremely unstable, and the specific kind of instability is negative static stability. Essentially what that is, is the aircraft will fly great, straight and level, undisturbed. But when you tell the aircraft to depart slightly, in any manner, the aircraft will continue in that same direction, even without pilot input. Here is a graphic on the screen to show you what I mean. If you pull the aircraft up, it will continue to pitch up without pilot command. That is why I believe that this aircraft would have flown way better if it had had a gyroscope in there, which is essentially the RC version of a fly-by-wire control system. All right, that's gonna do it for this episode of Aerospace Matt. I sincerely hope that you've enjoyed today's video, and if you did enjoy the video, then consider liking and commenting down below. And if you want to see more projects like this, then definitely consider subscribing to the channel because I intend to make more videos like this in which I take a fictional or a hypothetical or a design proposal aircraft that haven't flown in the full scale or RC before and making them fly. All right, everybody, I will see you in the next video.